This presentation was originally held as live 30-minute webinars in July of 2009. Due to its popularity, an abridged recorded version has been created. To see more complete content, you can visit my blog at the end of the presentation. This presentation will cover three aspects of BGA profiling. How to profile BGAs to different specs on your PCB. How to attach thermocouples to BGAs. And lastly, some new BGA inspection methods that ensure you maintain an in-spec profile for these components. Here I show a PCB with a BGA, DIP, and an electrolytic capacitor, or I'll call an ELCO for short. My BGA and DIP have the same specification, but I need to define a separate spec for my ELCO. This is made easy with Kix software. While defining your solder spec, uncheck the same specs for all TC button. In this example, my first two thermocouples, TC2 and TC3, share the same spec. But TC4, which is attached to an ELCO, requires a different peak temperature. I've chosen to define a lower peak temperature tolerance for my ELCO. Now let's take a look at our profile that has created a separate peak temperature for our temperature sensitive components. As you can see, I have defined slope, soak, reflow, and peak for my dip and BGA. But I have only defined peak for my ELCO since it cannot tolerate as high as a temperature as my other components. Now my current profile was successful in maintaining my ELCO spec. But now my reflow and peak temperatures for my standard components are out of spec. Striking a balance between the unique needs of the ELCO with the remainder of your components can be a daunting task of trial and error, especially considering the large deltas between these components peak temperature specs. So what can you do? Kix software makes this next task a breeze by giving you a predicted solution, striking a balance across the board. Kix Navigator, Kix prediction utility, shows an in-spec profile now for all four variables, as well as my special ELCO spec. When using the new recommended oven set points shown here. Now all I need to do is change my oven set points and I have an inspect process for my DIPS, BGAs, ELCOs all on the same PCB. TC attachment is a necessary evil. I like to poke fun at the process, but it is nevertheless a serious matter. Arguably the TC position, method of attachment, and care taken is of equal importance to the profiler. It is, after all, a measurement device that is only as good as the way it is deployed. Here I am showing a common method for attaching TCs to a BGA. Many will use like a Dremel, making a hole just large enough for the bead of the TC to fit snugly through the underside of the BGA from underneath the PCB. If this makes you cringe, it should. Another board bites the dust, but you have your reading. Here is another example of where the BGA has been removed and a thin gauge TC wire has been separated. So when the BGA is reapplied to the PCB, you don't get a teeter-tottering effect on the TC wire. Yes, this is another valid method. Your TC is precisely where it should be in order to get an accurate reading. But you say, Brian, I'm a contract manufacturer and I get 10 boards from the customer and I got to give 10 boards back. Everything you are showing me, yes, I agree, is the correct way, but it destroys my product. I feel your frustration, and many of us will admit we do the next best thing, and that is attach TCs in a non-destructive way, no drill holes or pulling the BGA off the PCB. But is it the next best thing? Do we know if putting TCs on the top or the side of the BGA can give us any insight into what is going on at the point of reflow? Well, I set out to answer just this question with a very basic experiment. Here is the underside of the same PCB as in the previous image, but I also have a BGA attached through my drill hole. In other words, this is my control. And in addition, 
a TC sitting on top of the bottom side of my PCB directly below the BGA. So in summary, I have four TC readings. My control, labeled inside, the top, side, and bottom. Here are those same TCs represented in my profile. My results are not what I expected. The top and side TCs behaved identically, while my bottom TC and control, labeled inside, also behaved in a similar manner. But what is interesting is that my control did not at all behave like either the top or side TC, which is often the TC attachment method used. I am certain you have many questions, as I do as well. What about the size of the BGA? How about the thickness of your PCB? I've received many of your comments and suggestions. It is clear that this simple experiment creates even more questions. KIC is currently sponsoring a study that hopefully addresses whether or not a reliable, non-destructive method of BGA profiling is possible. So stay tuned. Now let's move on to my last topic, BGA inspection. First we had SPI, solder paste inspection, then AOI, and now RPI, or reflow process inspection. With so many choices of inspection, what makes RPI special? As you can see in this animation, your PCB is being inspected with the ubiquitous AOI. AOI is great for picking up bridging, tombstoning, and other visual defects. But what happens when you get to the BGA? That's right, the defects are hidden from view. Now what happens with RPI? Rather than relying on visual inspection or perhaps a batch x-ray process, RPI creates profile data for each of your components. In this example, the same defects picked up by AOI are also detected with RPI with the noticeable difference being with your BGA. Since you are creating profiling data, an out-of-spec profile is equal to a defect. If your BGA is out-of-spec, you know now you have a defect. RPI presents this data as both DPMO, defects per million opportunities, and yield charts. So on any given day, at any given moment, you can determine your defects for your production run you now have an inline inspection system for your BGAs. As indicated at the beginning of this presentation, this presentation has been abridged from what was a 30-minute session. If you'd like to learn more on how RPI works, view some of your questions and my answers, you can go to my blog that has a special posting for the BGA profiling webinar.